Hi folks, so we're talking about American locks again, um, and what we're really going to be looking at today is, if you recall, I showed you this tool in one of our, my videos a while back. This is the Peterson American Lock Bypass Tool. There we go. It's just a little flag on the end of a stick, but if you recall, what it does is it slides into the keyway and then works itself between the actuator and the tailpiece of the core. Now this is, let's see, a uh, mid-1995 Series 40 lock from American Lock. Uh, they're sold pretty cheaply. They're not meant to be rekeyed. And this was well before uh, this tool came out. So what happens is you just slide the tool down the keyway, press in very lightly, and just wiggle it back and forth. And eventually it finds that gap and works the actuator over. And the reason that works is here's uh, a standard American lock actuator. So it has these little cutouts on the side so that the uh, ball bearings that hold the shackle closed can drop into them. And otherwise it turns 90 degrees and that wall pushes the ball bearings in. And this is the top that actually interfaces with the uh, tailpiece of the cylinder. And so when the tailpiece pushes on this side, like that, it rotates. But you can slide that bypass tool in like that, and it will push on the side of that and is able to lever it over so that it will rotate into the open position. Now what I have here are a few examples of American locks that cannot, uh, or at least are less susceptible to this. Because the first one up is a uh, Series 700 from 2012. Uh, it is non-key retaining, but it does have one wafer in it. Uh, and this is something that American Lock created when uh, the Peterson tool was first introduced. And it's just a thin metal disc like this. The tailpiece fits, the tailpiece of the core fits through that little cutout in it. And it sits on the back and it blocks the bypass tool from fitting in. But Peterson uh, came out with this tool. It's a two-piece kit and it's called the wafer breaker. Basically, the way it works is you take this first tool, which is uh, basically just a little metal punch, stick it in the keyway, and you hammer it in there, flip it around, and hammer it in again, pop it out, then take the final tool, Stick it in there. Just bang on it till it stops. Work it side to side and pull it out. And now that bypass tool will fit right in. And again, we just press lightly, push and wiggle side to side and Unless I screwed up again and didn't manage to actually break the wafer. Which I may have done here. So let's give it one more pass. put a bit of pressure on it. Now hopefully we will have actually
actually punch that hole that we need. Let's keep trying that, and we're catching the edge of that disc. So, we're not actually getting to the actuator. So that's pretty good. I also haven't done this in a while, so let's move on. The next thing, this is my 1100, I've demonstrated this to you before. Uh, this one, though, what I've done is I've put four of these wafers in. Now, it does make turning the key a little bit tight, but we can be absolutely sure that the wafer breaker is not going to actually be able to get through there. There just isn't enough space. And then the final one is a key retaining padlock. This is a Series 20 from 2001. Uh, I've opened it up and modified it, and I've made it uh, key retaining. So now, even if I can find enough of a gap to work this tool in, there we go. So now it's between the actuator and the tailpiece, but it's just not going to move at all because the key retaining padlocks, let me just find the key for this here. See, I can't even take the key out right now. Okay. Have a different actuator from the one I showed you before. There's no spring in this, and let's get the light in there. There we go. You can see how it's a half moon shape, and the tailpiece is also that half moon shape. So they fit together exactly, and there's just no moving that actuator without the tailpiece being able to move. So that's how that works. And of course, finally, the last one that I have in my collection that is completely immune to the uh, Peterson Bypass tool is that Series 7200 because that doesn't have a keyway for it to fit into. But, of course, as I demonstrated, it is completely susceptible to tubular picks uh, or even potentially single pin picking with a tubular tension tool. So, until next time, everyone, have fun and happy picking.